Excellent. So we're going to start. Uh, this is the City Council Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commissions. Today is June 30th, 2022. Uh, this meeting is going to run over Zoom and it's going to run from 7 to 8.30. Um, we're going to start calling the meeting to order. We're going to do the roll call. Pamela? Absolutely. Javier Luengo Guerrero? Here. Councilor Jamila Gore? Here. Uh, Susan McDonald Bolanos? Uh, Gwen Nabad? Here. Councilor Derek Perry? I'm here. Cynthia Suopez? Here. And Jana White? Here. Excellent. We have quorum. Um, as I said, this meeting is going to be recorded and it's over Zoom. Um, we're going to go to item number two of the agenda, which is public comment, which is, you know, we're as a starting select committee sort of aspirational for now. So it's just giving the space and even for us to get used to start with public comment at the beginning of the meeting. Um, we're we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, to see if somebody from the audience um, is interested to do public comment. So at this point, we're in agenda item number two, public comment. We have allocated 15 minutes for public comment. If you want to do public comment, uh, feel free to use the uh, raise hand feature. If you cannot find it on Zoom, it's right where reaction is. In, the bottom of your Zoom page. Uh, if that gets a little too complicated, feel free to raise your hand and I will call on you. Uh, Joella Turbutton, please go ahead. Um, we're gonna do, give me one second. I'm gonna time it. We didn't, we haven't decided uh, before how much time, but we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna keep the beautiful old Three minutes. Okay. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, Joella Tarba, and I love the way you say that. They call me Jada, and uh, I heard about this meeting when I went to the city clerk's office. Pam said, and who's Javier? Okay, yes. So I'm very interested, and I know about four other people who are interested. Unfortunately, I have a conflict tonight, so I have to go to another meeting, but I heard about it, and I wanted to introduce myself, and uh, I know two people, three people at least, who are here at and uh, to say that I'm interested in how do people go about it and the schedule. I see the agenda tonight, but when do you meet and your uh, synopsis and all that good stuff? And if it's okay to be a part of this in some way. Excellent. So um, just, just to clarify, when we're doing public comment, the public comment, it's not meant for conversation between public and the members of the committee that sort of standard within uh, city council, including boards and commissions. Um, I would, would I be able to get your email from, from Pamela? Excellent. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down for everybody. Excellent. So um, I, 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 I can shoot you an email. Um, so, so far, we are going, uh, we're still going week by week deciding when we're meeting. Hopefully we're gonna get into, into sort of a uh, bi-weekly, but we're still sort of trying to figure out that because you know people's lives are complicated and time is complicated. So, but I really appreciate that you're here. I'm gonna, oh, this is excellent. Um, okay, I'm gonna save this. And thank you so much for being here and for being part of public comment. I appreciate that you are taking the time to, to do it. Thank you so much. So um, we're going to wait a little bit, just in case if somebody is uh, around here. We, we have until at least um, if somebody shows up, uh, probably we have um, until um, 7 
18 a little more or less. If not, we can move to the next agenda item. Excellent. So we're going to move to the next agenda item. Uh, and maybe some of you may be surprised that we have introduction of committee members. And I noticed when we were building the agenda that one of the things that we didn't talk about in introductions was what was the process that each of us, when the first time that we serve in a committee commission board, right? And I think that's really important uh, for us sort of to talk a little bit about our own experience um, because I think that, you know, that's sort of our firsthand experience with, with specifically uh, sort of reaching out to city council or whoever reached out to us, asking us to be part of something, or maybe we were the ones sort of taking the first step. And I think that would be sort of interesting because also uh, people would learn uh, for the people who have served before in commissions, committees, et cetera, where we are and what so far has been our experience with that process. So I just want to open uh, the floor to talk for 10, 15 minutes in relation to our own experience as part of the introduction of the select committee of uh, how we came about to be part of committees or boards. When? Hello. Well, I'm new to this. So this is a new experience for me. And um, sometimes I feel like I have a lot of questions. And I know that um, Attorney Sewell came um, in the beginning to explain some of the open meeting law and stuff like that. And um, I feel good that I, if I had questions, I could call him. But um, and I've had some experience because I served on student senate, so we had to learn Robert's rules. <laughs> and um, you know, I I've served um, as vice president of my in high school of my high school class, and then I I also served as vice president and um, creator of Mothers Against Drunk Driving at my high school. But you know, I'm a lot older than high school now, so that's. I think that, I hope that answers some of the question. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Cynthia. <clears throat> so my, my experience with the city has been four committees um, and this is one of them, but um, the Board of Health, um, I think I've been on about eight or nine years, and it was an application that I filled out and had an interview with the mayor. Um, to um, The police commission was um, something set up by the mayor and city council, and I guess city councilors had, um, they could choose like five members and the mayor could choose five, so um, I put in an application for that and got a phone call from the mayor. Um, this committee and another committee pesticide were um, what's called select committees of city council. So I don't know if that, if that process is a little bit different, um, but to be frank, I was tapped on the shoulder, right? By city councilors. So that's how that process occurred. And there was no application. And so, yeah, so that's it. Excellent. How long have you been um, serving in the Board of Health, Cynthia? I know I should know the answer to this. Pam will just probably look it right up, but I think it's about eight or nine years. Okay. I think about eight years. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and that's a, that's a reoccurring thing, whereas these city council one-offs are just like, they stop, they start, right? So... When? 
I should get everything organized so I can put everything together in one statement. Um, I also go to a lot of city council meetings and during the COVID, I found it a really great way to get reliable news <laughs> and to know what was going on in the city and you know how the city works and stuff like that. And I kind of um, took some of that and sort of like, it helped me serving in student senate um, in terms of like, also, I, I also have done a lot of um, meetings with Climate Action Now. Um, and I did, um, you know, I would write letters for climate stuff and, um, you know, go to legislative hearings and things like that, um, which I've done quite a bit. So I've done some activism type work. Um, and I am trying to organize people in my community. So hopefully we can get to that. So that's a little more of my background. Thank you. And as many times as you want to intervene. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Jana? Um, so after the uh, elections in 2016, I got motivated to get involved. I think a lot of people got motivated around that same time. So um, the sort of precursor to me actually joining a board was participating in the uh, Women's Fund Leadership Institute for Political and Public Impact, which was really um, inspirational and transformational for me because a lot of people participating in that program were serving in various capacities in their communities um, and in ways that I found kind of surprising. So for example, somebody who was on the school committee who was not a parent, who was a renter in her community and who was fairly young and it just didn't fit my sort of um, typical vision of what a school committee member would look like. So I think one of the things that was really important for me was just being around other people who were taking advantage of these opportunities and who didn't necessarily fit my not very well formed vision of what the traditional um, board member looked like. Um, I found out about the vacancy on the planning board because I was Facebook friends with somebody who was on the board who happened to post repost something that I think had been on the mayor's page, Facebook page saying that there was an opening. So it was just sort of this random happenstance that I saw the opening. Um, and I asked to meet with her and asked her some of my questions before submitting an application. Um, and then I went through the, the formal process. So how to you know submit an application, had a phone call with the city councilor um, and with the mayor attended a meeting um, and then was appointed and that was all in 2018. Um, and I've been serving on the planning board since then. Um, my secondary appointment on the community preservation committee is as the planning board rep. So that just occurred, um, you know, when there was an opening, the previous rep had vacated his position on the board. Um, this committee I find out about because uh, Carolyn Mish, who's the um, staff liaison for the planning board, sent out an email um, announcing the creation of this committee um, that looked to me like it was going out to all of the um, chairs and, and board members of existing committees. And I decided to apply because of my interests that I discussed last time. Um, so that's how I ended up here. So. So hold on, I'm, I'm trying to see by the millisecond who raised their hand first. Okay. Jamila can go first. Okay. <laughs> um, I got to this committee by um, uh, Councilor Nash kind of tapped me for this committee. Um, I had in 2008 previously applied to the Human Rights Commission. So that was the first kind of introduction I had to commissions and committees in the city. Um, this woman who was on the Human Rights Commission encouraged me to apply, so I applied. Um, I didn't get selected for that. Um, and then uh, I got elected for city council, so that was an elected position. Um, and so that's kind of all the experience I have with commissions and committees um, in Northampton. Gary? Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat as Jamila. Um, you know, I, I have not served on committees prior to this, but through my time as a city councilor, I, you know, I 
I've kind of jumped into this realm and when it was announced that this committee was being formed, I expressed some interest because, you know, being a person of color and knowing how important representation is, this really hit home to me. So I knew that I wanted to be a part of this process uh, because a lot of what my city councilship has been has been a learning experience. And I wanted to see what other opportunities there were for the for people in the city. And, you know, by me knowing what is available, that means I can do more outreach to other people who I think would be uh, good fits for other committees. So I thought it just made sense. Perfect. Um, you know, sometimes you learn by doing. <laughs> and, you know, and, and even for different experience, that's, that's also sort of the norm, right? Um, I appreciate that everyone here can serve and can be here because I, I do. And we were talking with Jamila the other week, how this group looks like a pretty amazing group with a lot of experience, with a lot of diverse experience. In that um, it's good that, you know, we're seven and that allows a lot of conversation and a lot of sort of debate to happen. So I appreciate that this is not a sort of a bigger group. And I think that was came out of sort of the thoughtfulness of uh, City Council President Natch and Vice President Foster. And I appreciate that because in that way we can actually sort of uh, uh, do this work even better. Um, excellent. We're going to move to the next agenda item. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you going to tell your story? Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jenna. <laughs> so, um, so because of the kind of work that I do, I am, I, you know, I, I write legislation for elected officials statewide and, um, and locally, I work with different municipalities. I work with uh, city council elected officials writing ordinances in the local level. And I, you know, I sort of help them to move important and relevant uh, legislation, examples of sort of the welcoming city ordinance in Springfield, Southampton, Greenfield, Northampton, uh, the ban on the use of facial surveillance that uh, it's now being reviewed by the city of Northampton with also passing in Springfield, uh, we had a passing in Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, East Hampton. So uh, my experience mostly comes from already working within sort of the, the municipal structure and the state political structure. Um, but most of my work happened sort of behind, like behind the elected official. It's not sort of about being in front. And um, the first time that, you know, I was asked to just talk about a little forward was for the Northampton Police Review Commission, right? Um, that commission lasted eight to nine months. Uh, in the last couple of months, we were meeting around 12 hours each week um, because we didn't know better at the beginning. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that happens. And I was lucky there because uh, Cynthia was the co-chair of the Northampton Police Survey Commission. So we had a really diverse uh, Dr. Booker Bush. Uh, we have uh, Elizabeth Roman, Barajas Roman. So, so we have a pretty sort of diverse group and a really good group. Um, and so that, that helped a lot because also we have a, a, a sort of a really thoughtful process. Uh, we have several people coming and giving testimony. And because in a, in a sort of a strange but beautiful way, uh, we, we were in, over Zoom, we were able to have people from, you know, Cahoots from Eugene, Oregon, testifying about alternative to policing. We have Rachel Bromberg from Toronto, uh, who is now implementing an alternative to uh, crisis response alternative to police. Um, so we, we have we have the police chief several times. Uh, we have subcommittees. So I was the co-chair of the alternatives to policing subcommittee, and I was the chair of the outreach committee. So was a, as a structure and as a ser serving the first time in a full-fledged commission that was going to last, is going to be really intense and it was going to be eight months, was pretty good. Nothing that I didn't know for per se for the experience that I had before, but, you know, it's different being in front, sort of giving the face. Um, but also every time that I'm saying, you know, we have a lot of privilege, 
you know, I'm conscious that in the Enhanced Police Review Commission, me giving opinions about the police and how the police is doing, or when people are telling me that we don't have any trouble, and all of the same, I'm seeing all the testimonies of the unhoused people uh, that are being harassed. It's in, in that creating, you know, creating conversation and being able to talk about it. Um, I, I love that. I love, I think that has a lot of value. And I think that um, Northampton has a level of civility, uh, but at the same time, frankness that I appreciate. So, and I'm happy here with you guys. I think this is an awesome group and I think we're going to do great things. Now we're going to move to the next agenda item. Um, so we are going to be, uh, everybody here was able to take a look to the minute from June 9th, 2022 and June 20th, uh, 3rd, 2022. Everybody was able to take a look to the minutes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So is there anybody who wants to uh, amend any? Okay, uh, Cynthia. I think the June 23rd minutes, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, made a reference to our next meeting as July 30th. And I think it should be June 30th. Yes. Um, Full disclosure, when send me an email pointing out that. <laughs> and, and full disclosure, I bet that was, uh, that was planted there. So see who read it. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Uh, excellent. So I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from June 9 and June 23rd, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. Excellent. Gary makes a motion to approve. I'm looking for a second. I second. Excellent. Janice, second. Uh, Pamela? So I'm just going to note that as a Scrivener's error on the when I do the minutes and, and we'll be sure to make that correction. Yes. Give me one second here. Uh, sorry, lost my place. Okay, Councilor Jamila Gore. Yes. Uh, Gwen Nabad. Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Cynthia Swopez? Yes. Jana White? Yes. Javier Luengo Grado? Yes. Excellent. So we approve the meetings for June 9 and June 23rd, 2022. Um, so we're going to move to agenda item number five. But what I'm, what I'm going to do before. And because I want to be also thoughtful and uh, taking advantage that we have public, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna copy paste if I can find it before I sit it. Um, I'm gonna copy paste the um, on the chat. I'm gonna paste the agenda for today. So anybody who wants to refer to the agenda can do it. So it's uh, I just post I put it on the chat. So feel free to follow with us. Um, we're now moving to agenda item number five. Um, first, um, I know we were talking a little bit in the last meeting in relation to what we want to see happen, right? But I would get a little more concrete. Um, a little more concrete means that if we're, if we're going to be thinking about producing a report, right? How, that, that, how would be the structure of the report? What, are, what we want to see in the report and what are the hopes of what kind of information we can add to the report, right? Uh, one of the things that was mentioned um, in a couple of, two minutes ago, the first meeting, the organizational meeting was that maybe we wanna take a look to the entire process. What happened when somebody, uh, not necessarily the process written on paper, but certainly the process of some people that have gone through 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 the process of, of hearing an opening to all the way of being either approved to serve in a board and what that meant with the amount of time and commitment and you know that that's involved or somebody who you know applied for a for for a commission uh select committee or board and you know was not didn't get the position right so I would like to open the floor to talk about a little bit about the expectations and the goals that we would like to see as a select committee in relationship to, to the charge that we were given, which was to study uh, 
and, op- and give an opinion in an informed manner in relationship to the barriers and difficulties that people may face when trying to serve in commissions? I'm opening the floor. S- Cynthia. Um, so I hope I'm, I'm responding to your call, Javier, correctly. And this might seem a little insignificant, but people that I have talked to um, become disillusioned because there is no acknowledgement. Once the application goes in and we you know, be nice if there was something that says we have it, here are the next steps. And then when that search is closed, this is all about being kind and respectful to our, to our, to our residents. And when that search is closed, let that individual know, uh, tell them that they keep the applications for a year, I think. Um, if another position becomes available, you're still eligible, et cetera. So um, just, just one of those, um, basic 101 administrative things that would keep people interested um, in applying one time and and the second time if they didn't make it the first time around. Is that what you were looking for? Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, would you say that one of the things that we need to look is sort of the contrasting, right? Because I think Pam sent us a really thorough uh, document uh, about the process, uh, so frequently asked questions, which is uh, speaks to this, right? And also uh, a thorough spreadsheet um, that certainly is putting us ahead. And I, I just want to say thanks to Pam for that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, one thing, a piece of paper can withstand a lot of writing. And I, and I would love, as you said, uh, Cynthia, to look sort of real, real experience of real people with the process and we we if we can sort of point out in the, that timeline any discrepancy or something that we think that could be improved i think would be a really a really good goal for us to to achieve when uh, i'm just can i just respond one yes. more uh, i'm sorry gwen <laughs> um uh, i did ask an individual who was very frustrated with the process i'm sorry if i sort of went leaped ahead and said, hey, would you be interested in coming and talking to us and tell us how that how that worked? And that individual said, no, 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 I can't do that because that'll ruin my chances for another time. And so I just think that's a real feeling, right? That people have. And um, the other thing, and I hope we get it in later, I loved Pam's spreadsheet. Um, there were some things in the frequently asked questions that contradict what the website says. And so we'll have to, you know, I can point out that discrepancy later on. So, perfect. Thank you so much, Cynthia. When? Well, I was going to second um, what what Cynthia brought up, and um, you know, it's it's like when you apply for something, you have to give a lot of information, and so then it goes into like what seems like a black hole. There is confirmation that you submitted it. Um, but then nothing ever happens. Um, and I think Jamila mentioned that too. Um, I, I don't know if it was that you didn't get a response, but um, it really, really helped um, the work that Pam did, um, writing up all of the different committees and uh, just everything. It was so informative and I feel like everybody should know about it, you know? So that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, yeah, so those are just my thoughts. Excellent. Gary. I kind of touched on this before, but I think one of my goals and expectations is to also push back the, you know, the curtain of mystique of, of city service, um, maybe finding ways to, and I guess the umbrella term would be just outreach um, because also and mentioned that I, I really want to look at ways to get younger candidates and, and um, you know, it, it tends to be 
the people who serve on committees or do city service are folks who are later on life who are a little more established, who have the time. Because uh, you know we've, we've already discussed that it is a privilege to serve on committees and have the, the, the time and space. So I think that um, one of my goals is to Im improve outreach just from the city. Um, and, and I think outreach also, what was previously said from Central and uh, Grand is uh, disseminating information, communication back and forth is, you know, outreach doesn't just stop at recruiting, it should continue. So there should be some steps there. Um, and I, on a side note, I was tossing around some ideas of, of how to inform people more. And I was thinking of, of some coming up with out of the box ideas, like maybe a, a committee fair, you know, like there's, there's job fairs. So maybe coming up with a way that especially in now in this time where we have Zooms, where you could Zoom in with heads of many of the committees or chairs and then break up into smaller, you know, breakout groups. And you can have, instead of having to read things, you could just ask some questions or kind of get a sense of who else is on the board. So um, that, that would be one of my goals is thinking, you know, just thinking of ways to engage our population in the city um, to get them to come and engage. That's that's interesting, right? I so I, I I'm part of the Latino advisory board for NEPR in Western Mass, and we just have a sort of a cafecito in Chicopee uh, to meet the new CEO, the new director, and you know staff. And I think that kind of social activities would be good. Uh, I would advise. Uh, so the problem with break breaker groups that wouldn't allow to record because the recording would is, is it remain in the main room. So we would be violating the open media law. So, but but certainly, I mean, we were talking a little bit about this, right? What about if us, we, we set up a time to meet on a Saturday and we do it downtown, right? And we set up something for, you know, depending on the level of how comfortable we are doing that, right? And people can come and grab a coffee with us and we can be, you know, from 10 to 12 in a place and I, outside preferably. So I think that's, that's absolutely, that's a great idea. And, and I just want to say that I was thinking less even about our committee doing this uh, kind of fair thing, but just, you know, the idea of, you know, in January, second week of January, there's going to be a committee fair. And so all the heads can do their recruitment or, you know, a chance to meet, like a meet and greet of some sort. Yeah. Um, just establishing something like that. Um, you know, I, I think it's very important, especially after, you know, COVID going through the separation of everyone being apart is just, you know, we're, we're all relearning how to socially interact with some person, some each other. And, um, you know, I, I know that even on our city council, uh, we had our first hybrid meeting the other day. Thanks, ma'am. You're an all star. Um, but it, it felt good to be in the room and to actually be interacting with the council. So, you know, anything we could do to, to bring people together to help the city, I think is going to help us all. Absolutely. I think the idea of a sort of a city fair to show sort of, you know, the, the, the committees and all, it's a great idea. It's an awesome idea. As long as we have, you know, n none of those committees have quorum. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. As long as we don't do that, we're fine. Um, excellent. So, Lori, I, so we, Lori, we already went through the public speaking time, but I want to recognize your message. I'm going to make sure to send you an email with, with our next meeting. Great, thank you. And, and my apologies both for showing up late and having to leave early. I wanted to at least be able to drop in and learn more about what you're doing. So thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay, bye-bye. Excellent. Um, anybody else? Jamila. Um, I think that the idea of a city-wide like committee and commission fair is really good. I think that would be great if it happened. Um, because I think, I mean, just going by the, the sheet that Pam sent out, the fact that there's like 200 openings for different committees and commissions, like I, I didn't even know that. And that's a, that's a lot of openings that possibly people could be interested in. So I, I think we have a lot, a lot to work with as far as, um, you know, the, the amount of, of, openings and opportunities that are there for people.
when. <laughs> I didn't notice I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> um, I totally love the idea of a citywide fair. Um, you know, it's really important that people know that such things exist. Um, there's just so much, it's like, it's like um, exactly like um, Garrick said, the mystique behind it all, you know? So um, I really, really love that idea. Um, the other thing I was thinking was just within my own little board or my community where I live, um, it would be so great. Uh, and I wanted to talk to the group about this. Um, can we print out the, the public meeting and post it where, where you know, in our area that we live, um, that might be just a simple way um, to, you know, pass out flyers or, um, you know, kind of like getting out there and pounding the pavement in a way, but, you know, just wanting to bring attention to, to the mission and exposing people to what's up. Thank you so much, Gwen. Um, you know, keeping sort of goals and expectations. Um, I think I think it's it's. You know, the commission sometimes they hold pull hearings during their you know their useful life, right? It would be a couple of months, a year, whatever, right? And I think that yeah, I mean, uh, what Garrick said, the idea. It's, I think would be really good. Uh, we will have to sort of to coordinate it and to work with, you know, with um, somebody in the municipal level to be able to make it happen across the board. And I think that if we if we do it, we may want to think about, you know, I would love to do it in Hampshire Heights. I would love to do it in other places that is not downtown, right? Uh, or places where, you know, most of the people are going to be able to walk that a public transportation is not actually an issue. Um, I think that that would be good. Um, now talking about a little bit about expectations. Um, and and I, I, I put this one specifically because I keep thinking in my head, of course, we're going to come out with a report. But and I love the sudden I said, well, you know, I didn't ask anybody about that. <laughs> so um, I would, uh, you know, me and Jamila will draft the report based in all these meetings, based in all the conversation. Everybody's going to be able to sort of to wing into it and add, you know. Um, but I would like to, to to talk a little bit about, you know, in relation to expectation, if we do feel that a report should be sort of the tool to reflect the all these meetings, all the conversations or the analysis that we're going to be doing, or if anybody thinks that there's other ways to to reflect it at the end of the process. Hmm. Garrick, I feel that you have something to say. I, I don't know if you, I, my face is literally <laughs> giving me away. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to approach this. So I, I think a report is gonna be great. I also want us to be very realistic uh, in this committee in that, um, you know, no matter how awesome all of you guys are and we are, we are not, this is not a problem we're gonna solve overnight or, you know, there, I think this is gonna be an issue that continues. And I think that, uh, again, the pandemic has shown that we need to be flexible because bar the barriers to access easily shift. You know, who knows, another pandemic, all, all, there's a lot, of, a lot of things. So I, I would like us to really think towards the future and setting up um, the next committee to, to look at this. You know, I, I think that this might be something that needs to be revisited every couple of years. So um, I, I do think that having a report is gonna be great because in passing along this information, you know, everything we gather should be easily looked up by the next group that does it. Um, you know, so they're, they're not doing what we're doing where we're just kind of, you know, we are building this from the ground up. And so I want whatever structure we have to have some lasting legs to it for the city. So thank you so much, Gary. So I'm just thinking, you know, in a sustainable way, how would it, how would we sustain it? And how would we like keep it going over the long term in this spirit that it is originally? 
as it is right now. Um, that's just a thought. Yeah. Jenna? Um, uh, Javier, I think it's a, for me, it, it feels a little difficult to answer your question of is the report the right you know, vehicle for uh, sharing our findings or might there be other opportunities without yet knowing what our findings are, right? So I think a rep I, I think about the report as a bare minimum and maybe some more opportunities will emerge as we, you know, learn what we learned through this process and, and realize what our, um, what our advice is for the future of these efforts that may tell us kind of how best we can um, transmit that information. Um, I think to Councillor Perry's point about, um, you know, having having a good record for the future, I think making sure that the report reflects um, not just our, you know, the outcomes of our process, so what our advice is, but the detailed process, research, conversations, data that we gathered and so forth, so that as people are trying to build on our efforts in the future, they don't need to reinvent the wheel um, and wonder about kind of how and, and where we came to our conclusion so that we can be really transparent about whatever, you know, resources we've drawn on, um, you know, beyond our own conversation and, and um, collective expertise in, in coming to our conclusion. So when I think about the, the format of the report, I think about, you know, sort of what did we find out about the status quo? What did we find out about the barriers based on our conversation, based on data and research, based on testimony? What didn't we find out because we didn't have the time or the resources or the data to come up with it? And then, you know, what are our recommendations and all of the different areas that we've already been talking about, right? The process, outreach, um, and information dissemination, messaging, and so forth. Because um, I think it's, you know, again, to Councillor Perry's point, this all of this information is going to change and transform over time. The barriers um, will be different today and the enablers will be different um, in the future as well, right? I mean, the program that I mentioned that was really key for me in getting involved no longer exists. So three years ago, that might've been a really good group to tap into to try to sort of promote these kinds of opportunities, but it doesn't exist anymore. And, and but more good opportunities will pop up in the future. So, um, you know, whatever we create, making sure that it's um, easy to build on and, and so that it can be a living document into the future, I think will be really important. Yeah, I, I, I want to sort of say, um, hold on, I'm going to wait for when to go. And after that, I can I can speak when come back from the woods. <laughs> um. What I'm thinking is accessibility is a huge barrier that I think so many don't think about. And when I'm thinking, stating this, I'm thinking of language, um, thinking of language barriers. Um, and language barriers can be in any number of ways. Like it could be that we don't have anybody to sign. You know, we um, have, you know, only small amounts of population from a specific culture um, and there are no translators for those people. And so even having it on the city website would not help them um, if they don't read English. Um, and so that's just a thought that I don't want to forget about. Thanks. Yeah, language accessibility, um, you know, and, and also, I mean, you know, we're talking about a level of cultural competency that, um, you know, the entire city has to work on that. So <laughs> I think there is, a, it's, there is a starting point, right? But what I, wanna, what I was going to say before was I would invite everybody to think that we, this, is, this is the committee that is going to change what's happening, whatever, whatever that is, right? I would invite that because I don't want you to feel off the hook. I don't want you to feel that, you know, we're just going to tell a couple of stuff and, you know, it's a, you know, I do agree that this is sort of the report, all these conversations, when we deliver the report, that's going to be sort of a Polaroid of moment. And that moment is going to change. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean that we don't have the power to create, 
tools for accountability, to recommend tools for accountability. Uh, reporting mechanisms are powerful in, in when we're talking about uh, municipal structure, right? So reporting mechanisms for demographic serving in the city every six months, reporting mechanisms of accessibility, reporting mechanisms of the amount of languages that are being spoken in city committees. I mean, you know, I'm just throwing things in the top of my head, but I would invite this group to, because I will not let you off the hook. That's what I'm saying. I, I think that we should approach this as we can change things. But the challenge and what I learned is that we need to be super specific. We have to give recommendations that are actionable, that can be measured, and that are accountable to reporting. Those are things that are tangible. So the next time that this issue is being talked about, there is data, right? Um, if something is not written down, if information is not collected, that information doesn't exist. So one, so the bare minimum that we can do is to create a system where that reporting mechanism is created, right? What kind of reporting mechanism? I don't have any idea because we are just starting. We're gonna find out what do we think is important to keep track of, right? But I would invite this group to, you're not of the, <laughs> and I know you don't the mental event, but I just, I just wanna say, um, we can change things. In, in really concrete stuff. Are we gonna fix everything? No, that's, that's not gonna happen. Can we be really influential in really specific ways? I do believe so. Cynthia. Yeah, thank you for saying that Javier and Jenna. I think you outlined a really just chapter, chapter by chapter, great report. Some of the things that you were talking about and Gwen, you as well. And um, you, you zeroed in, Javier, and what I what I want to focus on too is how will we measure success? Like if there's 200 vacancies right now, I'm making this up, then success is year one, there's 100. Year two, there's 50. Year, you know, how do we measure success? And that allows us to drive our recommendations. Um, but just the profile you're talking about, I'm not sure there is a profile in the city of who applies, right? Are they white? Are they a certain age? Are they, you know, who applies? And who actually is are in the boards right now doing an inventory of that? That would be fascinating to, to see. So data collection, I just, I hearken back, sorry that we keep re re referring to this police commission report, but, um, you know, it, it ended up, I don't know, Javier, being over 100 pages, and we had all the stuff, you know, the conversations, the process, what we did, blah, 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 blah. But it was really the recommendations that I think a, a hierarchy like city council and mayor, they just like, they, they move to that page really fast, right? Like recommendation number one, <laughs> you know, and number two and number three. And so um, the report is important the way this particular power structure works. That's how they work. They work off of reports, but, um, but we have a lot of power too. I mean, I really, I really do believe that, so. Thanks for uh, challenging us here. Not to be, not to be lazy. <laughs> I think so. Um, Gary, do you want to say something? Yes, I did. Uh, and and I, I too want to thank you for making sure that you know you, you keep us on track. And but I did want to say that my my mentioning of, of preparing for the future was not to say that we're just going to kick the can down. Um, you know, you know things like fights for equality. It's always a struggle. You know, it's it's a series of battles and, you know, you, you win one, but you always, you're planning for the next one. And I think that's what we are doing. Um, and I think that's very important is to, you know, you know, when I say we're not going to solve the issue and it's not to say that we should just be disheartened and go home because we are all here because we know that we can make a difference. Um, but I, I, I like Cynthia's discussion about what is success? How do we measure uh, if we've done our job? And you know that might be something we can look into more, but um, you know whether it is filling positions or or even if not filling positions, seeing an increase in applications 
um, you know, that is a measure of success. Um, you know, looking at the data of who is applying, you know, if, if we find that through our efforts, we have an increase in minorities and underrepresented populations, you know, that's a success. So, um, you know, it, I, I, and I think as we start to form, what, you know, this committee more and really start to get down to the nuts and bolts, then we'll be able to have like a kind of a, an idea of what success is going to be. So thank you for saying that to me. Excellent. I so, so when do you raise your hand and put it back? Is there anything there? Well, Garrick just pretty much said it. Um, I love the idea of having that as some form of measurable success is that, that there are um, positions and that people, um, I guess I was thinking of like, I always think of like, how can I inspire people? You know, how can I make them excited about this, you know, in their own community? Um, and I think, you know, sometimes where there's not, there's always like a few people always like doing the same thing over and over again for many years, I think people get the impression that either somebody else will take care of it or um, that they, they don't recognize the opportunity, which we've talked about. Um, and I, I think in terms of like measurable success, I, I think that uh, another measure of success would be you know, having people nicely matched to committees and boards where they can really do like some really, you know, wonderful things. So I know that's more of a long-term thing, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, goals and expectations, formulating record requests to collect data. So just for clarification, uh, we created this agenda before we got the awesome documents from from PEM. So I'm going to propose that we table that so everybody can take a look to the doc, a really well look to the document that we got from PEM. And we can sort of uh, come at next meeting and talk about that. I think that we're going to get a lot of ideas. Um, and I think, I don't know, it's, uh, I, I want to see nodding or negative faces. Nodding, uh, Gary, nodding, nodding. When I don't know if you're nodding, you're nodding. Excellent. So we're going to deal with that. Uh, so the next item, I'm going to pass it to uh, Vice Chair Jamila. Okay, so the next item is um, strategy to collect testimonies. So um, I guess this would be what, what are you guys thinking about how we're going to go about collecting testimonies from people if we want to do that, if people think that's a, a good thing for us to kind of go after, um, how, how would we go about that? Um, what kind of testimonies do we want from who? Just kind of thinking about that. Javier? I'm gonna let Wen go first. Well, I kind of had a humorous thought, and I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the series of books called Postscript. And um, so there was a blogger and he was, this was back in the um, early 2000s, and he ran like a, a relationship blog. And he started getting so many postcards and letters of like people's like secret fears, you know, their, their things. And so what he did was he decided to put a call out for people to send postcards to a mailbox that were anonymous. And he actually made three, three books. Um, it was incredible and just put together in such an incredibly humane way. But I just wanted to share that that, that was my thought just now. Cynthia? Um, yeah, Jamila, just a question about these testimonies. Are they from applicants who were successful, applicants who were not successful, I don't know um, people on the get. street? <laughs> Do you want to get it from applicants who were successful or applicants who were not successful? I mean, it seems like applicants who were not successful don't want to testify, but that might, might not be all of them. I don't know. Depends on what we mean by testify. I mean, I, I can, I can have a personal conversation, right, and not, not have them come on a Zoom tile. But, right, right. 
Um, so, so it's applicants. Is that what we're focused on here? I would think so. I mean, I kind of want to, yeah, applicants. Yeah, I would think so. Fa failed applicants. Because <laughs> I, I, I only know a couple, <laughs> for a few. Well, I feel like we could do successful applicants as well. I mean, okay. why not? Okay. Jana? Uh, so I have a, just a level setting question, which is, um, I would appreciate it if somebody would clarify what you mean when you say testimony. That's not something I'm familiar with from either of the boards that I'm on. So I wanna make sure I understand how that functionally works before thinking about who I would want to invite into that process. Jamila, if you want, I can sort of talk a little bit about that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Excellent. So what we mean by testimonies is can be in any format, in any way, right? So one of the things that we had in mind is that to create a Google form where people can share, you know, that can be sort of general questions about from one to 10, the level of accessibility, how, much, how important it's, you know, language, language access, um, uh, how many times have you applied? It could be from that to written testimony or people who feel more comfortable. Um, and this obviously would be, would, would be done in a way to, you know, to, 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 really, to maintain confidentiality, uh, could be uh, an audio recording that, that, you know, we can sort of uh, do some transcript to it. Um, so any kind of testimony, I would say that may get us sort of a, a real sense on the ground of how people that had been successful or unsuccessful try to be part of board, right? So I'm, I'm up to any kind of way. That's in testimony, it's not only a narrative, it's also that we, also we can do sort of an assessment. Jana. So just clarifying, it sounds like testimony is not subject to, uh, well, not that it's not subject to open meeting law necessarily, but it's not the same as public comment where somebody is coming forward and having to identify themselves by their name and address and so forth, that there are other ways to participate, particularly participate anonymously or kind of en, en masse and not necessarily showing up to a meeting. So it's, I'm just trying to make sure I understand it's substantively different than public comment. Yeah, that, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all very helpful. So um, I agree that talking to people, that there's value in talking to people, both who have been unsuccessful and successful in the process of applying for boards, but that also leaves out an entire population of folks who don't know that these opportunities exist um, or think that they're not for them and therefore never put in the application to begin with. Now, that's a much harder population for us to reach. So I don't know how we do that, but I think it's critical that we try to involve that population in our process in some way. Councilor Perry? Yes, I think that what uh, Jana said is, she, pretty, she took the words out of my mouth. I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, our, our goal is to look at barriers for people apply, implying. And so if people don't know, you know, that's, that's a whole thing. But I also think we could look at some of the city staff and, and hear what they think about what has worked over the years, um, you know, how, how things have changed. You know, as Jana said, there, there used to be a, a committee that kind of helped springboard her into that. You know, I, I think the folks who were in the city also have knowledge, which could be great. And, and I think this testimonial if, portion, if I'm understanding this, is mostly data collection. We're just collecting data from people who have gone to board, you know, who applied, correct? Um, so yeah, so I, I think that, um, you know, if we're going to look at people who haven't done it, maybe again, looking inside of our system and, and communicating with, uh, Sean Donovan, for instance, he does a lot of outreach with folks and maybe, 
um, having just a survey that he can help pass around uh, for people would be a good, you know, way to kind of reach some of the people who don't know, um, you know, whether it's a questionnaire is like, hey, have you ever thought of service? You know, why, you, you know, what, why have you not? Did you know there are opportunities? Th those questions, we can, um, you know, we can approach it in, in three different ways. So, you know, we want to get the people who already know about it, who applied, succeeded or failed. You know, we can talk to the city who have helped move the process along, and then we can talk to people who just don't know. Um, and I think that each each subsection is going to require a different approach. So, Javier. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. It's obvious that somebody who fail applying is because that person has the access and may have the time already to serve, right? Which is different for somebody who basically feels that you know commissions are not relevant and they're not going to change anything. So why I would serve, right? Which also would speak to, uh, are we having really those kind of commissions that are relevant for the people or just technical uh, to the in instrumental to the functioning of the municipality, right? So I think that that's interesting and I think I agree with that. Uh, so sh I talked to Sean, I met with Sean uh, two days ago, I think, yes, two days ago. So he is gonna come to uh, one of our July meetings. Um, I still need to confirm which one, but he, in July he's going to be able. He, they they are still dealing with the, um, the with the budget and all the things that they have to do for the Department of Community Care. So uh, in July he's going to have availability, and I'm going to we're going to with Jamila we're going to coordinate with uh, Sean uh, for a date for him to come, and I'm going to try to give you a heads up with time so everybody can if they, you want to prep questions. Um, as I said, for the Northampton Survey Commission, I work with Sean Donovan uh, creating a survey. He had his own survey. We sort of uh, cluster all the testimonies that we got, I got, that he got. So it, this is a process that we have done before. Um, the, the difference is, in, as Garrick said and, and, Wentz, and Jenna said, it's sort of the target audience, right? And suddenly one size is not going to fit all. And when we're talking about accessibility of people who are systematically being rejected and put aside, those are two different demographics, right? Uh, and we want to hear from both. So that's something that we need, we we're gonna sort of to have to talk about and sort of have a lot of cl clarity about it. Gwen, did you have your hand up? Um. Yes, so I was thinking of like doing a blanket mailing or something like that, but I think as Javier is saying that it would be more of a targeted a targeted thing. Um, and so. Okay, any more discussion on that? Council Perry. I just have a question. Um, you know, we, we've talked about the police commission and maybe you guys could just inform me how you went about getting testimonials, how the outreach worked for, for that. Sure. So um, first it was extremely difficult to convince, not to convince, but to really show the big group that was important for us to collect uh, Testimonies was was it was was not simple. It was not an obvious mode for the big group, right? Uh, mostly because you know it takes a while for. We, we were like fourteen, we were a lot, so it's complicated to generate sort of the a cohesive group that it's it you know you're gonna give that kind of idea and everybody's gonna be like yes, which is one of the things that is ideal for a small size group like ours, which you know no you know testimony, yeah of course okay, so. Um, we created a subcommittee to do it. And that subcommittee was open, uh, was uh, Alex Jarrett, Dan Kennedy, and I was a chair and Sean cooperated and worked with me, right? On, on different stuff. And one of the things that we did certainly is that um, we cooperated in a targeted outreach, which means uh, when we're talking about unhoused people, when we're talking about people that 
are in poverty, uh, people that low income. So we knew we knew that we needed to target those, but also we put sort of a general call. Um, in in a lot of cases, uh, we promote that on different interviews and radio shows. We try to promote it within the city of Northampton. We po- we put posters. We so we did a lot of stuff, including coffee shops. We we put it so places where we thought was going to be important, right? Uh, we also targeted um, affordable housing complexes. So we we did a, a lot of different stuff to try to do it. In my end, we created a Google Doc that would allow you to give a, read, write your testimony, decide if it was anonymous, if it was not anonymous, or that the same uh, Google form would allow you to upload an audio file. And you and, and when, when uh, if I remember well, you would be the option that audio file would transcribe or would be played. Um, Sean did uh, something similar. He got a lot of written testimony. At that point, Sean was still working with the Wildflower Alliance. So Sean would have sort of a little more time to be able to sit with somebody and write down what they were saying and gather their, their testimony, right? Um, one of the things, and I think I mentioned this uh, in our organizational meeting, the big challenge is that it's really easy to come up with people with good experiences, right? It's really easy, super easy, right? Um, everybody here has been successful being <laughs> called to serve in talk committee, right? It's really easy for that, right? Um, but at the same time, we, we should not falls, fall into a false equivalency, not because it's working for us, it's working for everybody, right? So that, that was sort of the challenge. And also in, in adding one more layer to that challenge was that, and I mentioned this uh, in our organizational meeting, Northampton is a tiny town. So if you get testimonies for anything uh, that is a negative experience, you sort of, it's really easy to reverse engineer that for anybody who perpetrated that or anybody who is familiar with that situation and know who said it. It's, it's super easy, super easy. And that's, that's something that I, I, maybe I invite this group to think about it, right? Uh, if somebody comes forward saying, I have a bad ex- this is my bad experience and describe the bad experience when I apply to this committee, that's going to be really easy for anybody reading and having access to that document to know who that person is, right? And that makes things complicated because people get really fearful. And this is what I mean when about uh, our privilege, right? I can be here laughing with you and talking about this. And because you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I mean, I mean, I do care, but I, 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 it's not in my mind thinking I should not say this or that, right? And but, but that's privilege, right? So, and also we need to be really thoughtful because in the at the moment that um, we use that and we add it in our system in our email, uh, if that's getting to our email, if that gets passed from one member to another, that becomes subject to open record. Right, so uh, we need to be really thoughtful about that. So the process that we're, we should come with has to be thoughtful enough to know that uh, it's not going to be perfect by no means, and it's going to be super imperfect. But we need to get as close as we can to be able to assure people that they're if if needed, that their identity it's going to be it's going to be protected. And one of the ways that we have to be really thoughtful about it is, is that we are not generating documents that are subject to uh, to to an open record request. I I think too that um, you know the police commission was a a very. Um, um, it was divisive and it was, you know, we're talking about taking money away from cops and cops treating people inappropriately, right? Cop with a gun coming to a, to a situation. So, so my only point in saying that is that we would get scores and scores of people at every meeting and we were kind of committed to hearing them out 
every single one of them. I can't remember, Javier, if we ever cut off public comment, much to our, you know, we were there five, six hours a night, okay, just because we did two hours of public comment. So we, we the, the testimonies you're asking for, Jamila, we sort of, it was built into the cake <laughs> of the very nature of, of, that, um, of that commission. I don't think were that controversial. <laughs> I mean, there is some controversy um, so it's going to be a little more work at trying to get those testimonies and have people feel comfortable. And I think to Javier's point, it's not going to be a perfect process. Um, so. Um, I like the idea of, of a Google Doc, but I wonder, Javier, would that be open, would that be uh, open to public disclosure? Like, a Google Doc? That's a good question. Thanks, Dintia. Uh, that's a good question. Um, by the, so this is the thing. So the way how we did it, every single warning was in the document placed in a way that by the time you got to do it, you knew what, 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 what was going to happen with that, that, that testimony, right? Uh, also, in this was uh, in my case happened to me, but way less than with Sean, because he would be doing one to a lot of more of the one to ones that I was doing uh, at that point because he was, you know, he was that was, you know, he was working with this this community. Um, Sean would have conversations with them about this, right? So if Sean was taking the the the, the and, and and also was easier for Sean because Sean was not subject to anything, right? So, but if Sean told them that there was an option of a Google form, he would have to give the entire spiel about, you know, this may happen, this may happen. We need to, we want to be really upfront with you. And even when they did, uh, when Sean gathered sort of written testimony and after that, the person, we, he left and we left with people uh, a number. So I, I left my number. So they would be able to call me back if, you know, if two days later they have afterthoughts and they didn't want to add their testimony. So they would be able to call me. And the, and the deal was that you call me saying, you know what, better no. I don't say anything. I just say, oh, that's really bad. Oh, my God. No, no, no. You said no. Okay, that's it. Testimony doesn't exist. And because this was not enter into the into the so database the google doc form that we have at that point was still in the pre stage uh was not part of open meeting also because you know a person in the street is not subject to us it's about the communication between us and the material that we're creating within ourselves for this work right it's not it's, it's right it's not, it doesn't count until it comes to play into that So Jamila, I want to flag that we it's a fourteen. We want to leave at least knowing this group ten minutes to talk about the next meeting, the schedule. So just want to flag that. Yeah. So we can move on to um, the next bullet point if you guys are done discussing our um, possible compensation. Um, I know it's something we talked about before, and it's something that was in the document um, that Pam sent out that there was compensation at one point for, um, for one group. Um, but I, I don't know, me and Javier talked about talking to the city solicitor about it. Um, yeah, I. So we are sort of unaware of any full, complete, written down opinion about this issue. It may be, but we haven't heard about it. So one of the things that we are going to try to do in the coming week is to get in touch with the city solicitor and try to see if can issue a written opinion. Um, a written opinion is really important. It's, uh, there is uh, quite a difference between a verbal opinion and a written opinion. Um, so we're going to be looking into that. Um, 
if the at the end of the day, the if the at the end of the day, the opinion is that there cannot be a per diem for people serving in, in commissions. I mean, when we're talking about childcare, when we're talking about um, you know access to internet, that is going to allow me to be part of this. Um, if the case comes down that the city cannot put that money, I mean, I I you know I still would advocate to look for alternative funding uh, and to look for a way to do it. When? Well, I, I actually was thinking about alternative funding and I was thinking that money can be a really huge motivator. Um, but I think also, I, I feel like if we're serving in our community or people are serving in their community, they should at least earn a way to put back into the community or enjoy the community. And I think, um, you know, I was thinking like, um, you know, gift cards or, you know, experiences that are local, um, incentivizing people in that way. Um, I, um, you know, really like the idea of a circular economy when it comes to government service. Cynthia? Um, yeah, I I'm recently, uh, I'm in this organization about redesigning power structures. It's from a DPH grant and we talk about this a lot. And um, the host organization came up with a compensation policy that I'm happy to share. But then the kind of cool thing is, and I'll just give you the number, it's, it's $30 a meeting. But if you're a person who, um, you know, we all have our individual situations, but you have a full-time job and you, you know, you don't need or want that $30, you know, that that's available in, in, a, in a very confidential way for individuals who feel they need that $30. And so if that's the number, okay. And so it's just a, it's a way of thinking about it that um, it's, an, it's a great advertising tool. You know, if you need compensation for these meetings, it gives you, it's kind of clean per meeting, $30. Um, and so, and, and what happened with this particular organization is that most people opt out, right? Because they know, they know the intention and who we're trying to entice to come to these, these type of um, um, committees with this particular policy. So um, I'm kind of with folks that say, you know, I, I do think the city's first reaction is like, no, no, we don't, we don't do that. And I, I really think we've got to push because um, it could be done. I think it, I think it can be done if, if we really want to do that, or at least at the very least in our report, we say, hey, this is what we're recommending. This is, this is really important. This could, it could make a difference. Yeah, I think we should definitely include it in our report as a recommendation. And when your idea of, of a, like a gift card or maybe like a Northampton gift card would be great. Um, Jana? I kind of feel like we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit. I mean, I'm not entirely sure that we've actually identified that money itself is the barrier. I mean, I think childcare is a barrier. Time is a barrier. Money might solve some of that, but not all of that. So I think it's very useful to gather the information about what isn't isn't allowable. But I'm at least not yet ready to say, I definitely want to recommend this thing when I have really no information to suggest one way or the other, whether that would be a motivator or an enabler um, for people. It, pro it probably would be. Intuitively, I think it would be. But I don't yet feel like I have sort of evidence to back that up. So I think as we're thinking about it, I don't, I don't wanna ask for the data just to figure out how we can immediately figure out some other way to do it. I wanna ask for it so we know what the structures are and then also hopefully take the time to figure out whether that would legitimately change things before we decide what we're, what we're recommending. Javier? Yeah, I, yeah, this is a little bit to sort of to moving ahead too fast, right? Uh, but I'm always going to come with a but. So specifically in the Hunter Review Commission lost three women of color. 
And I think that from, at least from where I'm coming, I can speak by myself, one of the big issues was the accessibility and being able to, to access childcare and pay for childcare. Um, so that's, that's from where, so I'm coming from experience. I'm not coming from just, you know, I think this may be, that certainly was something extremely bad because I mean, what, what turned out for us was that we lost extremely important voices uh, of women of color systematically. It was like all of the sudden in consecutive weeks, they were gone because, because of, you know, different issues that are related to that. So, uh, so we're coming from that. And the reality is that we put it in this here with Jamila because we do think that, so we are not gonna have extremely concrete conversations until we have the concrete information, right? And in the meantime, I personally want us to start sort of talking about things, starting sort of teasing issues. Independently, if after that, that is gonna take us in that direction, if what we're talking now, it's gonna complement what we see in the data, excellent. If it's not, we have a thoughtful conversation that is gonna help us to go wherever we need to go. Cynthia? Yeah, in, in the interest of time and Javier, I just wanna, um, I contacted all those women, all the women of color that left our commission. And I do have to just say that um, the num one of the number one reasons were that um, they didn't feel heard. And so that's something that I do think we have to keep in mind if people don't feel like they're really a part of this, um, they're not going to they're not going to apply. So um, and, and that's about culture, right? In in a committee. And it's about the culture that's established already in, in, in some of these committees. So um, people need to feel heard. And so um, and I heard it from from the, the three, four women that left. Gwen? Well, there were a couple things I couldn't agree more with. And I know that I run into it in my own community is just, um, you know, the times of the day. Um, you know, a lot of people say, how come you don't do it while the kids are at school? You know, and, you know, that is a perspective that, even as a mother, but as a parent of older children and not yet a grandparent, I haven't really um, thought about, you know? And so I keep sort of fooling around with that in terms of like the time, I'll change the time and in the day and then, you know, give it a few months. And then if those people still aren't coming, you know, I'll go out and reach out again and be like, okay, you know, I'm trying you guys, what's going on? And you know, a lot of what I hear is just like the timing and just stress, just general stress, like stress in the community, stress politically, um, fear, um, fear of being unheard, fear of having the ideas rejected, um, you know, also kind of a sense of apathy um, in terms of like having been trying for so long to have that voice and just keep you know, having it not heard or changes not being made. And so I think people get, at least from what I, I talk to a lot of people about this stuff. And so that's what I hear a lot. Oh, well, we have number six on the agenda. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that we table number six. Uh, one of part of the um, word document that um, Pam chair talks about sort of what what's the reading process for it. So I think we can sort of uh, cluster number six with uh, the second point of number five, which is formulating record records and collect data. I think that may go hand to hand, and we can table that. I don't know if the rest agree with it. Yeah. Also, if we don't do it, we're going to be here until nine. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we table uh, number six. Um, scheduling. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give you an option. So 
um, I, if I remember well, people are going to be away. I'm going to invite you to send me to, just one line. If you feel comfortable, send me one liner. I'm out this week. I'm out this week. I will sort of put together a doodle poll. After you do that, I'm going to put together a doodle poll with all the really viable dates, right? Because I think it's going to be the faster way to do it. Uh, is, that, is that okay with everybody? When says yes, then it says this. Okay. Is okay. Gary, yes. Jamila, okay. Excellent. So in your end, you're going to send me uh, your sort of, when you're going to be away, your sort of general availability for the next two weeks. And as soon as I get that, I will build the dual poll uh, based on that, and we're going to be able to come out with our date. Excellent. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Council Perry, a second. Jamila, second. Uh, Pamela? And can't hear you. <laughs> Gwen Nabad? Yes. Councilor Perry? Yes. Cynthia Swopez? Yes. Jana White? Yes. Uh, Javier Luengo Grado? Yes. And Councilor Gore? Yes. Excellent. So these meetings concluded. Thank you so much.